Okay, pay the gimel. So we have so far two achtoses under the banner of Avayu Lekim. The first achtos is Rambam's achtos. And the Rambam's achtos is that Hashem creates the world with tools. And the tools are nivdalim, they're malachim, they're mitzias, they're not alakos. And we say, Hayispor agaz alafetz, if they have no free will, v'chuli v'chuli. And then we moved on to the Zayah Zachtas. The Zayah Zachtas is deeper than the Rambam Zachtas. Why? Because the Zayah Zachtas is that the tools are alakos. But the Zayah never says there's no world. The Zayah simply says that Hashem's involvement in the world and Hashem's mastery over the world and Hashem's governance of the world is exact. In the Rambam's model, there's junk, there's mistakes, there's accidents. Like I described it to you, certain things are not Bahashgah Pratis. It doesn't take away from the Nibashgah Pratis because it's a byproduct. If you make a big meal, I think the Ramam actually gives this marshal. If you make a big meal, you feed a lot of people, that's what you're paying attention to, to this garbage. So the Ashgacha is on the meal, and on the people, and the garbage is mehechates. It's not a chassad in the perfection of Hashem, it's a chassad in the tools Hashem employs in governing His world. But the Zayar says that the Svidas are the tools. And Svidas are not nivra, nivdal. Svidas are nitiyas, they're lakus. So, so the whole arichis is that they, the governance of the world through the tools is perfect. There's no junk. The Ebishta makes a big meal and it feeds a bunch of people. Every single scrap which is going to be eaten by a rodent or by an insect or by a microorganism is preordained or precisely ordained by Atma Sein Baruch Hu through the Havai Hulakim. Comes again the Rebbe says, "Bal Shem Tov Adrit Shit." Noch tiefer. What's the Bal Shem Tov Shit? That not only is the governance of the world exact, there's no world. Push the press. There's no world. So let's begin to read. Val P A Mik Yisaid Ha Bal Shem Tov Nishmasid. Now let us add the depth and the foundation that the Baal Shem Tev gave, and I think the reason it says the word Yisait HaBaal Shem Tev Nosheyedin, because the Baal Shem Tev gave only the Yisait. And the Rabbeim that came after it gave the Binyan. In other words, the Baal Shem Tev gave only a Yisait. And I must tell you that there is a letter from the Baal Shem Tev, and I wish I could find it. I wish I could find it. I'm 99% sure I saw it in Atomim. But I've been looking for it. There, there is a collection of letters from the Baal Shem Tev and the Tamidia Baal Shem Tev, the Magid, the Tamidia Magid, and the Alter Rebbe and his Chaveirim, in a collection that's called Geniza HaKersonis. This time, this period now, is 100 years since the Geniza HaKersonis was discovered. It was right after the collapse of Tsarist Russia that they found in an archive in Kherson, which is in the Ukraine, a huge, huge collection of letters that then were 200 years old, 150, 200 years old. From who? Just letters? And it's hundreds of letters from the Baal Shem Tev. There's some of them even from the Baal Shem Tev before the Baal Shem Tev. And the Baal Shem Tev's Chaveirim, oh. the Talmidim, the Magid's Chaveirim, the Magid's Talmidim, the Alter Rebbe's Chaveirim, and so on. When this collection was found, there was a rich chassid who would later lose all of his money. So before he lost it, he invested it in this in part. Named Reb Shmuel Gorari, he bought the entire collection. It's over 200 letters. And he brought them to the Rebbe Rashab in Lubavitch, in Rostov. The Rebbe Rashab saw the letters and he before paskened. Before Zaris Russia. Before Zaris Russia. The Rebbe Rashab looked through the collection and he said it's, it's, it's copied, it's not originals. And it was clearly copied in great haste, copied very quickly. So it melds a lot of errors, errors about dates, errors about names. But by and large, it's Emes. That's what the Rebbe Rashab said. And the Rebbe Yats printed a lot of them, most of them. So where's the originals? Wait. The Gniza has disappeared. Now we don't know where it is. Maybe it's in Russia. When the Friedrich Rebbe shipped his farm to America, you all know one box didn't make it. So in the 70s, they found half that box in a Polish library in Varsha, which was later brought to the Rebbe in Lamed Ches, like I told you, the Mises. When they went to look for that collection of Ksavim, the Rebbe asked Adel Chitrik, is the Gniza there? He specifically asked about the Gniza Chesanas. Now, I cannot tell you why the Rebbe asked, but I just want you to know one thing. 
that the veracity, the credibility of these letters has been a subject of incredible debate. The Munkachid, who the Rabbeim had the highest esteem for, said it's Baba Mises. It is Ma'atav and Lagamri, based on the Mesaida that they have in Chsidis Ungar, Chsidis Poil. The Rebbe Rasha, based on our Mesaida, says, no, it's absolutely accurate. And when you read the Friedrich Rebbe Sichis, you see they match historically the version of history that, it's, that comes out of the Geniza Achersanas. There was a Yid who had a Shaykh Astalabavich, who wrote a number of Sfarim. One of them is Igres Palatanyo Bnei Deire. I forgot his name. And he came out against the Gniza. And the Rebbe wrote him a five-page letter defending the Gniza, a four-page of it, and it's printed in the back of Atomim. If you have the Atomim, the, real, the original Atomim, it came out in Poland. In the back of the Atomim, there's a letter from the Rebbe from 1954-55. It's probably now in English, Kedish. It's a long, long letter where the Rebbe defends the Gniza. And one of the things that Rebbe writes is that there were letters in the Geniza that were Shemus. Pashat Kabbalah Zachim. That were not Mefarsim. You couldn't make it up, the Rebbe said. It's not Shaykh. The Rabbeim were printed most of the letters because most of the letters are history. And it's a nest. They printed them before the war because they disappeared in the war time. And I don't know. In other words, if the Rebbe hadn't printed them in Poland... It would probably lost for posterity unless they'll turn up in some Russian library because they didn't. The Rebbe does not have them in his library now. <coughs> I saw the fetish. I saw an interview with Adolf Hitler in 1970 when he went to Russia and Poland and put the Sidik of him. The Rebbe asked him, "Is the Gniza there?" And it wasn't. The Gniza was not there. Anyway, our Rabbeim Gahalt Nasas Kedish Kadosh in our Igris Kedish they're printed. We look at Rebbe's Igris Kedish the way he divides it up. There's a section separate. And I, I hold it against Bet 11 that he did it this way. Inside the Rebbe told him a fetish. So he had the letters of the Rebbe and the Mechtvei Agniza. But the Baal Shem Tev's Igris and the Magid's Igris should be printed in there. Sefer I told us, but I don't know where to find it here. There's a letter from Baal Shem Tev which I saw. And it's a longer letter. The way the Gniza letters go, they were written on little scraps of paper. So a long letter is like a bunch of scraps. Uh, a scientist took these papers and he tested the age of the paper. And he showed scientifically that it's too young to have been from the times of the Baal Shem Tev. So the Rebbe Rashab said, I said it's copies, it's not originals. Now the, the, the speculation is, the speculation is that the Rujan Rebbe was an, was an avid collector of Ksav. And he, paid, he would pay hundreds of rubles for one document. The Rujan Rebbe was by Senefesh Vekisve Kedesh. I don't know what happened to the originals. They're probably lost, burnt, destroyed, I don't know what. But it was Pushat Mesa Nefesh Kesavim for all the Gedele Achsidas. And they arrested him. In anticipation of this arrest, he made copies of everything. And the government confiscated the copies. What year is this? It's probably the 1820s or 30s. The government confiscated the copies. And it's a nest they come get the copies. Why? Because not because they, they left by him the originals, but because the copies were kept by the Goyim for us to have. That's the nest. So I don't know where the originals are, but he had hundreds. It's a W door. He was made in Hefesh Kisvei Kedesh. They look at Rujina. I don't know where the originals are. Aside from the Rujina Mishpach is hiding it, but there have been so many Yiddish Shitzanis, and I can't imagine that no one, anybody knows where they are. It was a real collection. of very Shem Tev's Letters from before the Shem Tev yet. So we have the Geniza. So there's a letter in the Geniza where the Baal Shem Tev is defending his Shita. And it's written to a famous Rav. He says, you're coming out against my Shita. And I forgot how he words it. He doesn't call it Eineid Movade. He has a different Lashon. Because the Baal Shem Tev came along and said something basically very radical. That everything is God. Now you must understand why would that make people nervous. There was somebody before the Baal Shem Tev who said everything was God. And he was an Apokadis. His name was Baruch Spinoza. Baruch Espinoza was a Jew who was excommunicated. They put him in Chedim. Because he was a big Chacham and he learned Kabbalah, learned, and he believed everything was God. Now what's wrong with believing everything is God? Do an Aveir, it's Eichet God. You kill a person, it's also God. So in Tanya, he gets the Chedish Chavhei, the 25th letter in Tanya, the Alter Rebbe has to defend this. He has to say two things. Everything is God, but that doesn't mean everything is good. It doesn't mean everything is right. And this free will, it becomes very dynamic. It becomes a very serious issue. But this was a basic shita of chsidis. Going back to the Baal Shem Tev, and again, the wording is, you say the Baal Shem Tev, and I'm going to suspect 
that the reason the Friyidi Kebbe writes the word Yisod is to say that the Binyin was by Talmidei HaBal Shem Tev, and Talmidei Talmidei, especially, of course, the Alter Rebbe and Chabad, but the Baal Shem Tev is the Yisod. Not only everything comes from God, which is already a radical enough Chiddush, everything is God. Even a Rasha doing an Avei, is Eichet Alakus. Like the Alter Rebbe brings in, he gets like, Kedish Chavei, Havaya Omale Kaleil. When Shimi ben Geda is cursing David HaMelech, the Navi says, the David HaMelech says, God told him to curse me. God told him to curse me? He doesn't punish Shimi. And the reason doesn't punish Shimi because of Ayah Amalek Halel. So there's a whole house but in the Maimir, what it means, Hashem Amalek Halel, that Abish gave him Chayis at that moment, he couldn't do it without Abish, this Chayis, and it's not a stira to the Bechira. Because if something happens to you, it was the Kavana Hal Yaina. The fact that someone did it to you, this is his Bechira, Reh Bechira, Sevachuli. But it is a sensitive issue, because we're not only saying everything comes from Hashem, even Klippa, which is already difficult enough to understand, we're saying everything is Hashem. So there is this one letter, where the Hashem Tev is writing to God will be Yisrael, who was upset about how the Hashem Tev was talking about Achtos. And Derech Agav, Maimir Amuzgir, but a very appropriate Maimir Amuzgir, I, I, I probably mentioned this earlier this year, but I'm saying it now, especially if I didn't, but even if I did, it's worth repeating. Bet 11, Zuzayn Gizun, the Rebbe's librarian, is our workhorse. You've never seen a man like him. The guy works very, very hard. He printed over Igris Kedish. Al Rebbe's Igris was printed a few times. Um, in the latest edition, he divided up the Al Rebbe's Igris separately, the Mittler Rebbe's Igris separately. It's a Mahtanic Igris. It used to be one krach. They made separate krach. He redid everything. Huh? In the in the newest edition of the Yiddish Kedush Al Tareb, at least could be from the Middle Rebbe also. In the back of the book, he has all the letters that relate to the Al Tareb's letters. Meaning to say, Al Tareb was responding to things that were happening in his time. Some of those responses were responses to things that were said by Gedeli Yisrael. La Marshal de Vilner gone argued Al Tareb about Achtos Hashem. We disagreed with this. So in the back of the book, they have the Vilner gone shita. That puts Al Tareb into the gross letters, the gross own letters. And al Darach said the famous machlokes and that the word between the Alter Rebbe and his chaverim, Avram Kalisker, and so on. So in the back of the sefer, you could read the igres that are the reka of the history. It's it's a very very good job, very important, because you can actually see shvarts of eyes. And of course, everything he quotes, he quotes the sources where it's published from. It's it's as they say in yeshivish mitentem at feast. It's done well. So you can actually learn a letter of the Alter Rebbe, which speaks, for example, about Achz Hashem, and then see why he wrote that letter, because the Vilna Gon came out fire and brimstone against it. Because how can you say God is in a bathroom? How can you say God is evil? And so on. But Baal Shem Tev, everything is God. Everything, not only everything comes from God, which is also hard to understand. So the Vilna Gon believed that there were places void of God? The Vilna Gon believed that there's places void of God... And God's involvement in those places is very concealed. The Vilna Gon did not believe that there's a place in the creation that God doesn't know what's happening. That would have made him an apicatus. And the Vilna Gon was a from yid. Don't kid yourself. If the Vilna Gon would walk into this room, he'd make us dizzy. He'd make, he, in five seconds, we'd all say that what, they, what he's saying, the Baal is saying. <laughs> Don't, narzich nish. The groz geves na god l'shem b'gdel. The Alter Rebbe, every time he mentions his name, calls him a chosid hagon. I go on a chassid. He he didn't say other shemes ago. Oh, that's ha. Huh? No, no. Don't, don't. Be careful. No. Be careful. Be careful. It's easy to make fun of misnagdim. You don't do yourself a favor. You don't do anybody a favor. He said that the Eibush says mashgiach b'ashgach apratis. He said simsim kipshute. But he never took away ashgach apratis, and he certainly didn't take away yidia. Hashgach is one thing that Hashem makes what happened happen. And Yediyah is another. Hashem knows what's going on. Even if there's no Hashgach, there could be Yediyah. These are different issues. And they're separate. And you have to understand each one by itself. And it gets very complicated and it gets very, very involved. Okay, the Gros spoke about Hashgach. He didn't believe that the world is God. He believed the world comes from God. And that God governs the world. Or at least he knows what's happening in the world. But the Baal Shem says everything is God. And it became very big. It was a big issue. And they argued about it in times of the Baal Shem Tev. I mean, the, the Alter Rebbe and in the generation of the Alter Rebbe, besides for the Narasha politics, they went switching chassidim and misnagdim. They called us up a kursim for this. They called us up a kursim because we, we broke the barrier between the Bnei Teda and the Pashtayid. 
They called us up a Kursim for whatever other things they didn't like that we were doing, the change of Nusach and the Simche and then the Kulanzach and so on. But they, the, the truest contention was Chassidim believed that if you say that Hashem is not in a bathroom, you're an Apokadis. Mistagdim believed that if you say that Ebishtin is in a bathroom, you're an Apokadis. And that's room for a war. Because you're talking about theology, you're talking about Dvaram Dvaram But it's, 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 the, the, he was not an Apokadis. He was wrong, but he wasn't an Apokadis. I saw a letter from Rabbi Desler who learned Chassidus Chabad, and he was a Litvak. So it was very hard for him to learn what the Alter Rebbe was saying and, and sort of sleep at night, knowing that the Gros said otherwise. So he wrote a letter to Bichu de Masmid, which is printed in the back of Bichu de Masmid Sefer, the Rebbe Liol Dessler, the Mechav of Mechtam Elio. He writes to him, the Rebbe Liol Dessler, the name of his Sefer is Mechtam Melio. So he wrote to Rebbe Liol Ishtar de Masmid a letter, and he writes to him, based on my research, they're all saying exactly the same thing. And the Ishtar de Masmid wrote him a whole tshuva, he didn't understand the word of it. And the Rebbe got involved. Our Rebbe had to write a letter which reached Rabbi Yol Desler through a middleman, Rabbi Chbil ben Yominson. And if you look in the Shem, it says, Rabbi Yol Desler had a son named Rabbi Nochem Desler. He was in Tels in Cleveland, in America. And he wrote the Rebbe a letter that had been a gear to the letter that you sent my father about Simpson. It's very short. Can you expound upon it? And the Rebbe's basic answer to him is a Chavnish Katzait. Anyway, I'm, I, I'm really wasting time. I just wanted to tell you what I could I just wanted to tell you an Akuda. And the Akuda is that there's a letter, one letter from the Baal Shem Tev, And if I could find it, I'd like to show it to you. Where the Baal Shem Tev says, Oh, that's the last the Baal Shem Tev uses. That benigayed to your taina against us. And our sheet of leisasar ponimine from the Baal Shem Tev, Not from the Alter Rebbe. From the Alter Rebbe, you have this in the Gemsa Kedish Chafei. <coughs> the same idea. Benigayed to your taina. About our sheet of Lesa Sar Ponimene, I don't understand what you want from me. It's me you said on the combination of Kabbalah Saramak and Kabbalah Sarizam. I didn't make it up. It says if you read Kabbalah Saramak and Kabbalah Sarizal, you will see our sheet of Lesa Sar Ponimene means there's no place where he isn't. But this is the difference of Chasidus. Chasidus doesn't say Hashem is a balabayas, Chasidus says Hashem is everything. Now let's learn inside. Now it's important for me to tell you that there are different steps in this. And when you learn the Maimir, you're learning only one step, but there are higher steps, and it's Negei and Pshat. Because here the Tzemach Tzedek says, for those of you who learn Pei Gimel, he says, Bechaf Gimel. He says, Law and Kill Law. But there's a reason why the Tzemach Tzedek does this. But first I push it when I read Ivrim Etaych. Okay, I... I, I I gave you a whole piece of history, and I, and I like to do the thing. It's very important for me to share these ideas with you. And I, again, if I'll find that again, it's like Kedish I'll actually give it to you, show it to you. Uh, question. Do we have uh, Itzel Matzah's letter? It's printed in the safe. All of it's printed. And I read Itzel Matzah's letter, and I didn't, I didn't learn it. But it was, uh, Itzel Matzah was a Gon Oilam. It was a Gon Adir. I heard from one of his children, the guy knew Yeredeh, Shach and Tazbal, word for word. Yeredeh, not Rambam. Not Yerushalmi, Yerdeye. But Peshach and Taz, you know what kind of gone that is? And I read the letter, I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. In other words, it was confusing. His children still alive? His, his children have all passed. Three of his four sons survived the war, he lived in Israel and in America. Um, and the youngest of his four children was the father of an uncle of mine. So I heard some things from my uncle, about, they heard from his father, from his father. So let's go. But the Sefer is called Yiras Hashem We used to have it here in the collection of Svarim. Yiras Hashem the Sefer on each of the Masmid. And in the back of the Sefer, you have the letter from Desler, Harav Desler, to Rabbi Chid the Masmid and his answer. And the end was that Harav Desler wasn't satisfied with Rabbi Chid the Masmid's answer. So the Rebbe wrote the Tshuva. Very short and sharp as, as, as knife. Never seen anything like it. Not sharp, critical, sharp, crystallized, clear. The establishes a foundation in how to read what the Zayar says. The question of Achtos, which is predicated in the question of Alakus and Dveikus, as we have discussed it, is explained even more. And the Rebbe says, You don't usually have in Mamari Chasidis his spoilers, right? 
half of a fella, in twice in Derech Mechasech, you have it in Me'achtos, and you have it in Avos Yisrael also. When he brings the idea of why the Gemara speaks in the negative, not in the positive, he says, half of a fella, wunderbar, a might in the Kapshat, half of a fella. So he says, Milvad Hayichod In addition to the unity as far as the flow of godliness. Now you must understand what these words mean. The flow of godliness means that there's here and there. There's the world, and there's there where there is the source, and there's a flow from there to here. News of this here and there, and there's a flow from here to there. The world exists, it's one entity. The source of the flow exists, is another entity, and that there is a joining between here and there. That's that true. there is Havaya Nalakim. Havaya Nalakim is the source of the Shafa Laki. And we say the Achtus between the source of the Shafa Laki and the world. How so? Because Havaya Nalakim, Havaya Nalakim are not separate, and they're Dovak and Alakus, and therefore the Dovak and one another, so everything is exact and perfect. But you're not saying Eneid Movada, you're not saying there isn't the world. You're just saying that the world is completely. In sync, it's completely in harmony with the Rasna Valakus. Says the Rebbe Oyd Zeis, there's another love. And this does not say in Zeya. What's the Oyd Zeis? Please look inside. She'enid Mamish. That is Mamish nothing. Afilu ben Not only is there nothing from the point of view of Alakus, there's nothing, we don't exist. Not we're dependent, not we're connected, not we're locked in. We push it, kepshutai, don't exist. Our Matthias is Alakus. Now, I don't have time for big arichasin, but I, I gave a, a couple of the chavr. The chavr finished the maim and I gave it to him. Yeah, you learned it. Where the Rebbe brings also the different shittas. That's number one. Number two, there's, other, there's another sikha, by the way, of the Rebbe also, where he talks through the different achtan. There's a medrash that says that there's four different madrigas of achtas. There's Yisrael, and there's Rochov. And there's Moshe, and then there's a fourth. Yisrael says, God la shemi kolo lekim. Rachov says, I think, even higher than Yisrael. And Meisha Rabbeinu says, Rachov was the woman who saved the two spies that went to see Yerichel. What does she think? Yisrael. So she did a pasuk, and they quote what she said. She understood Achz Hashem. She understood Hashem was Malabot. She believed in Hashkach Aparatas, which the pagans didn't really believe in. And then you have Meshe Rabbeinu. There's three or four different actors. And each one is progressively hard. This is discussed by Rechaz and Hemshek Ma'am Ram for the Rebbe Rashi in the beginning. Which is based on Shari Rechaz Vamuna. Yadum Forsum. But each one had a higher actors. The highest actors is the actors of Meshe Rabbeinu. Meshe Rabbeinu's actors is Ein Oid. Meshe Rabbeinu's actors is Ein Oid. Now before I proceed, let me say that Moshe Rabbeinu's Achtos of Ein Oid is higher than Moshe Rabbeinu's Achtos of Ein Oid Malvadai. Ein Oid Malvadai and Ein Oid are neighbors. They're in Pashas Vashanon and in Chitas of Sheni. You have to Atar Esos Ask Hashem Elokim Ein Oid Malvadai, and then a few Psukim later, we had Aita Yehim Vashveis Alavecha, Ki Hashem Elokim Vashem Ein Oid. So there's a big discussion about the difference between Ein Oid Malvadai and Ein Oid. Ein oid mavada means there's nothing without him. But with him there could be. Ein oid means there's nothing other, period. So in classic Maimon, there's a sikh of the Rebbe in Chelech of where he turns this on his head, in classic Maimonim, Ein oid mavada is a lower madreg. Ein oid mavada would be closer to Taka to the Havai who are like him. There's nothing without Hashem, but with Hashem there is a world. And Ein oid means there's nothing besides him, Period. And the Lashon and the Medrashim in explaining the words Ein Oid, this is the quote, Afilu b'chalolei shalei l'meneid. Even if you admit the emptiness of space, there's nothing but God. Not only even when there's a world, there's God. Even in the vacua, even in the, in the nothingness, Ein Oid, there's nothing but the Eibishter. In other words, even nothing is also the Eibishter. Nothing in our context is empty space. So the Baal Shem Tev said it's not only a question of how involved the Eibish is in the world. No, Ein Eid. And, and you see clearly, Ein Eid Mamish. He doesn't say Ein Eid Mulvadeh. So Machzer says Ein Eid Mamish. There's nothing other than God, period. That's it. It's only Eibish I just told you the difference. You cannot exist without me. Yeah, it means you exist or you don't exist. 
exist because of you. you you're dependent on me. Right. Your existence is nothing but me. Sound very similar. They sound similar? Your exist nothing means you don't exist. I exist. You think you exist, but you're me. So dependency and non-existence are not the same thing. 100% dependence doesn't mean you are. It just means you aren't independent. Saying that you're nothing but God means you don't exist. And that's the truth of Shem Now you'll see soon that it's going to get a little bit complicated. And the Father is Rambo. Why can't Ein Eid Mavada be the Zaya? A Philobin Ibrahim. Even amongst Christians. And Lema means, Shapiha Emes, according to truth. Now, usually, Apiha Emes means Kabbalah, yeah? But in this case, Apiha Emes means what? Chsidis. Ein an Ibrahim Bechinis Yesh Vidavar. The Ibrahim, the creation of that Yesh. Okay, Taj Yesh? Something. How did I translate the word yes. yesh? Self um, independent existence. Independent existence. Yesh means bazunder. <coughs> independent. But it uses the word vadava. Ainan Evraim Bechinus Yesh. The creations are independent, but they're also not vadava. They're not an existence even that is dependent. As we see them. We see a world. Finish. The only thing we don't see is God. We have to believe in Hashem. But we see a world. So you come along and say, Hezekhine, you don't see it, but you should not there's a balabas to this world. It's, it's difficult to, to practically integrate. You know, it's easy to say. It's very easy to, to be. To be a philosopher about Hashem is not a difficulty. To live that way is another story. You know, Avraham Avinu was thrown into a furnace because he believed this. He paid for his emunah. How do you know a guy believes in God? How? Because he says it? No, because he gets thrown into a furnace for it. Then, oh, oh, now I'm anxious with Tanem. So to say that the is a balabos and live by it is echet an inyan. But to say that the welt, there's nothing besides for the Ebesh that's a much deeper idea. Kizehu et This is how we see it. Lefi, why do we see it that way? Sheinenu reyim chayes alakus. We're blind. We can't see the life of the Ebesh which creates us. And because we don't see the chayes of the kus, which creates us, we perceive ourselves as separate from the Mebishter. Now, boys say, I want to add something very, very, very important. When you learn shariyichet ve'emunah, in Azei Zeichet and Asach Maimorim, they use two words, not one word. They use the word kiyum and the word chayes. Or the word havoya and the word chayes. And it's important for me to articulate this. Tzamech Tzedek uses only the word chayes. But you must say, but Pashta said he doesn't mean Chayas to the exclusion of Kiyom or to Chayas to the exclusion of Avoye, he means both. What's the difference? Because there's two contributions. Number one, Hashem puts a Nishama into our guf. And number two, he creates Yeshmayayin, the matter of our guf. And like I discussed with you earlier this year, Aristotle believed that Hashem gives a Nishama to the guf. But Aristotle believed that the chaymen is kadmen, that the guf itself always existed, the material always existed, he simply organizes it. And Aristotle was a real kaifer be'ik, was an emes apokadis. We did this already, and I answered you already, and I told you at the time, since when do we have to waste our time trying to understand the shit of apokadis? You asked me the exact same question a few weeks ago, and I spent 15 minutes answering you, loss. So you must understand that there's two parts to this. Number one, Hashem blows life into our nisham, goof, but that's yesh yesh. But number two, there's also kiyum. He makes us from nothing into something. So when he says the Lashen, chayis, here, it must mean not only the chayis, but also the havoya. Not only how the nishama gives order to the material particles that make up our body, but the very creation of those particles, is happening in the nisham. So we don't see the process. You don't see how this table is being created by the Mevish and the by Misa Mukhlu. You just see a table. So to you, this is an independent and secure reality. Says the Baal Shem Tev, if you could see what the reality is, you would see that not only the order and the beauty and the purpose of the table gets life from the Abish the very matter that you're seeing is created by the Rebbe, by the Abish Tev, Mamish, every second. Every second the Shem is making the matter from the. 
the Rebbe Rashab was talking about his, his slap says, that every second Hashem makes you something. And he said, bring that teller. He said, keep shooting, bring that teller. I'll show it to you. Do you imagine? That's pretty scary. A Rebbe should say, I'll show you. I'll show you a slap says, bring me a plate and I'll show you a plate. Huh? So, and then what happened? An ordinary plate. What happened was the Fidi Kebbe got very upset about it. He was very nervous. And then the Rebbe changed his mind. And the Rebbe made a comment that he's afraid that people are going to say, he said the Lashon, Ichav Meira, as it nispol, when you see the elakus of a plate, you're going to start bowing down to it, Rahman al but, but could you imagine a Rebbe should be able to say to Sidim, I'll show you, Yichal Which Rebbe? The Rebbe Rashab. I'll show it to you. So it's a Machzedek says, you see a world because you don't see Ebishter. If you would see a Lakus, you wouldn't say the world is dependent upon Hashem. You wouldn't say that the involvement of Hashem in the world has a precision because Avayu Lakim, because his tools are not Malachim, his tools are Svidis. You would say, Einoid, it doesn't exist. In as much as the life of Hashem gives us life, and Abay say, understand that when it says Chayes, you have to say it doesn't only mean Nishomi into Guf, it means Kiyim also. Anachnu betelim mimitsis. We are bottled from our form. We are bottled from our form. Ubebechidus efes mamish. And we're nothing mamish. How bottled are we? So he brings Shara Yichad Muna paid a gimel. He brings Shara Yichad Muna paid a gimel. You should know Shara Yichad Muna has 12 parakim. And at least the first seven parakim, at least the first seven parakim, are a series of achtas. It's not one achtas. The first few prakam are one achtos, then a couple of prakam after that, the second achtos, and paid exayin or paid vav is for sure another achtos. Paid exayin is a tif, it is different achtos. Here he's quoting paid a gimel sechak, which is the first achtos, which is the lowest achtos, in Shadi Yechid Vamun, where he gives the mashal, keziv ha-shemesh, rays of the sun, kishuhu beguf kadar ha-shemesh v'cholu, when it's inside the body of the sun, kumesh ha-kosa bukutam an chelik beis paid a gimel. And these are direct words of the Rebbe. She'ilu nitna reshus la'ayin l'reis. If Hashem would open up our eyes and just let us see one thing. Not to see God. No, 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 no. Not even to see godliness. No, 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 no. Just to see dvar Which is malchus of atzil sachakal. Allow us to see the words that are saying yehi rakia. Allow us to see words that are saying yehi mendel. If we would see our direct source, Malchus of Atzilus, that's it. But that direct source that's responsible for our existence on the level of Ayin, to Yesh, we would realize not that we're dependent, and not that He's controlling us perfectly as in the Achtos of Ayol Akim, we would realize that we simply do not exist. Ayin Ayin. Yu'in Shom. Venim thus. She'ein eid shum mitzias cloud. There is no reality. And again, the translation of the word mitzias, which I like to give, is form. There's no form. The table's not a table. The person's not a person. Klal at all zulas mitzius the yisbarach. Besides for the reality of God is barach. And the Rebbe concludes va'adezeh. This yisodet of Al Shemte, which was developed by the Rebbeim after him, that leis asar upon him and everything is alukus, is a yichud hagomer. That's the ultimate yichud, which doesn't even say in Kabbalah. Not only is it not in Rambam, it's not even in Kabbalah. And he quotes the Lushan from the Siddur, Atahu, Atshalei Nivra Ha'elam. You were the only being before the Abish created the world. Va'atahu, Umisha Nivra. And you're the only being once the creation happened. What's the next two words? Beshava Mamish. Before God created the world, what was there? God. Now that Hashem created the world, what is there? God. What's the Hebrew for that? Einoid. There's no other. Einoid. Hal Yav Tanya. Hal Hashem Bechayai. Azamar Lelakai Beyoidi. Chayai means my neshama. Oidi means my goof. Just like my neshama is a lakus, so is my goof. Now I am out of time. I wanted to read a few more lines, but I'm going to stop at this point. It's like if we're not really here, it's just a shadow. Does this, does that make the same thing to like apply with us? The same way I'll buy a new kid. Yo, my question. No? It's more than double. It's more than double. I'm saying, even now that we it's said... It's more than double. Meaning that kids, 
It's not a representation of. means a representation. Representation of. And this is, there's no representation, there's only him. Just only him. Okay. You're asking a very sophisticated question, actually. And there's a sikha from the Rebbe, which is Mesot Vechel Chafal. And Shadi Yichot Nechid Yud. The Rebbe observes that in Tanya, the Rebbe brings the Moshal of Eir Hashem is twice. The Moshal of the light of the sun and the sun, he brings twice. He paid a Gimel and he paid a Yud. But he uses different words, different terminology. Because in Pede Gimel, he's talking about Yeshus. This world is one with Hashem, like light of the sun and the sun. In Pede Yud, he's talking about Eden Saf. How Eden Saf is inside Hashem. It doesn't have a Mitzvah. And the Rebbe explains why the Alter Rebbe uses different language. Because he says, our world is Sheket and Elokus is Eros. Which means, when you're speaking in the Atmos, nothing exists. But in terms of Hishtalshos, in terms of Giluim, and the way they are bottled to Atmos, from the perspective of Atmos, it's not the same on all levels. You cannot call El Abhaza Dveikas. You wouldn't say, this world is Dovaka, it just doesn't know it. Because it's Sheker. Legabe Atmos, the world doesn't exist. Legabe Atmos, Eirin Sof, is God. And there's a difference between saying, Legabe Atmos, there is no world, and saying, Legabe Atmos, Elokus, is Elokai. Mm-hmm. So, in as much as that's concerned, there's a difference between the two. But, if you want to understand this, you're going to have to work on it. It's a very deep distinction. In other words, the wording of your question is very sophisticated. So if you're interested, I can show you the sikh. Is it in Yiddish or in Yiddish? It's probably in Yiddish. Rabbi, you have to learn something. Um, I'm sorry? I said I'm going to have to learn something. I'm not really okay, learning. so if you want, it's in the Yiddish. Like bring me the book and I'll show you exactly which one it is. Um, sorry? What's the sikh? Look at the sikh. It's in the Yiddish.